day ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to World of Warships. Today we're looking at a sort of sister ship to Congo, Japanese tier 4 battleship. Now, everyone knows that Congo is a Japanese battleship, but what some people may not know is that Congo was designed and built in Britain. Yes, this vessel is based off the British Lion class battle cruiser, if I remember correctly. But why do I mention Britain? Well, for one very simple reason. Today is the 29th of April, and today a very special grand old lady was introduced into the game. The HMS Warspite. The first Royal Navy vessel in the game. There are all sorts of vessels that this prestigious event could have been awarded to. Hood, Ark Royal, or even Belfast. But they decided to go with HMS Warspite. For one of the. Well, I, she had a pretty illustrious career. Ordered in 1912 and laid down in the same year, she was commissioned in 1913. She saw service during World War I, where she received one honour or award. Between the wars, she was modernised and went in on to serve in the Second World War, where she received 14 honours and rewards. At the time of her conception, the use of oil as fuel and these untried 15-inch guns was a revolutionary thing. It was re revolutionary, and their speed of their top speed of 24 knots was fast for a battleship at the time, making these the five Queen Elizabeth class battleships some of the first fast battleships. However, by the outbreak of the Second World War in 1939, these fast battleships were no longer fast. In fact, the similar Revenge class was so slow, it was believed by the Admiralty that they were no longer suitable for first-line duties. During the war, one of the five Queen Elizabeths was lost to enemy action, the HMS Barham to the U-331. However, Warspite does have its own little piece of the action when it comes to the war against the U-boats, in that it, its fairy swordfish float plane was the first aircraft to destroy a U-boat during the Battle of Narvik, in which she also paid, played a major part, destroying several German destroyers. She went hunting for the battle cruisers Scharnhurst and Eisenau, and also took part in the hunt for the German battleship Bismarck, in which she just hunted and did not actually take part in destroying it. Uh, of course, that honour went to HMS King George V and HMS Rodney. She served in the Atlantic, Mediterranean, Indian, and Pacific Oceans before she was finally decommissioned in 1945. In 1947, as she was being towed to the scrapyard, she broke loose of her tow cable and ran aground on the Cornish coast. She was eventually salvaged, and scrapping of the horse bike began in 1950. This took seven years, and the grand old lady was defiant till the very end. So, what is special about Horse Biting Game? Well, she is a tier 6 battleship. She is around the same age as the Fuso. In fact, she is pretty much the same age as the Fuso and the Congo, but she is better armed. Whereas Congo has 8 14 inch guns or 356mm, Warspite has 8 15 inch guns, 381mm. She has 53,800 hit points and up to 330 millimeters of armor. Compare that to the Fuso, which is her comparative vessel, tier vessel. Fuso has 57,100 hit points, 
substantially more, but she has ever so slightly less armor, only 305mm at the most. The main difference is, is between Konga, Fuso, and Warspite is that Fuso has 12 14 inch guns compared to the 8 15 inch guns. These 14 inch guns are pretty deadly. 4,100 maximum high explosive shell damage and 11,010 maximum armor piercing shell damage. However, Warspite does fucking make up for it. its lack of guns with ever so slightly more damage. High explosive shells now do a maximum of 6,060 damage, with armor piercing shells doing a maximum of 12,590. However, there is one thing that Warspite lacks. Range. Her gunfire control system offers only 16.3 kilometers. Compare this to Fuso, which has a maximum of 21.8, meaning she is severely outgunned. Even the Tier 5 Congo has an advantage at 21.2 kilometers. Despite her slow speed and rather large size, Warspite does actually turn pretty quickly. Her turning circle radius is 550 meters, with a rudder shift time of 20 seconds, which is actually rather slow. But once that the rudder is at, is at its maximum degree of turning, the vessel will turn incredibly well. Almost as well as a destroyer. In fact, compared to the Cleveland, it has a better turning circle than the Cleveland. Compare this to the Fuso, and it has an even a far better turning circle than the Fuso. And, but, and even the Congo. So for a battleship, she has an incredibly good turning circle. One of the best turning circles in the game only really outmatched by destroyers and the smaller cruisers. I believe the Albany has a better... should have a better one. Yes! 490 meter turning circle. But still, 550 is bloody good, meaning she can quickly change direction. However, 24 knot... What's the, the 24 knot maximum speed isn't very fast. Once a fast battleship, now just a battleship. Most ships in the game can catch up to her, save for, of course, the Kawachi, which is bloody slow. She has a fairly nice anti-aircraft armament. She gets 11 single 20mm Olacons, like this little guy, but she also gets 4 octuple 40mm weapons, Vickers 2 Pounders, weapons also known as pom-poms. These weapons were still in use despite the proliferation of the Bofors 40mm. Warspite also gets four twin 102mm weapons, or 4 inch weapon guns. These also act as a secondary battery with, along with, with 8 barbette mounted 152mm guns. So despite her shortcomings, Warspite is an incredibly good vessel. And when she hits, she hurts, making up for her lack of guns compared to the Fuso with more damage. So, let's take a look at some games, shall we? Now first I'd like to apologize for the harbor sounds in that in the harbor bit. <laughs> I did not realize it was that loud, so I do apologize. Secondly, before you watch this clip, I will ask you to watch this video so you understand my standing on what you're going to see. Because you're going to see something, and I want to make sure that people understand it, just in case this video does indeed hit something like 100,000 views. So now that that's done with, you can now watch the video. So here's our first battle on North. This was recorded around about 6 o'clock. 
in the morning just to make sure I was one of the few people who actually got some first time footage of him because I guarantee there's going to be a bunch of war spiked videos, videos in the next couple of days now this particular battle isn't really a, a true representation of war spikes capabilities I was using one of the modules that for some reason was increasing the gun reloading times and increasing the traverse speed of the turrets a stat which I have got to put into the into the video so in case you didn't catch it in the harbour section here it is right now according to the battle chat in uh, I think it was this battle um, the Russians apparently aren't very happy with this ship. <laughs> they apparently want it to be its range to be nerfed. I think they're just being sc scornful, wanting oh, who cares about the Royal Navy, the first navy in the world, one of the most prestigious. We want our navy, you know, the navy that did nothing during World War Two. <laughs> anyway. Moving on. Already we can see the main downside of the war spite, it's short range. I'm in range of that fuso, as we can see by the incoming shells, but I can't return fire. It's simply too far away for me. 16.3 kilometers is not very far at all. For the Miyogi at tier 4, that's pretty damn far, but for this thing, nope. Now here's where this turning circle, this pretty nice turning circle comes in, to, in handy. Torpedo squadrons. Now admittedly that Saipan didn't use the manual aiming that torpedo squadrons are capable of. So I was able to easily dodge these torpedoes. Something I can't really hope to replicate when against destroyers. Or indeed manual aimed torpedo bombers. This this tight turning circle also means that I won't collide with the island here and it will provide for some for me. It will allow me to get round quicker than say a Fuso or a Congo. However owing to this vessel's slow speed it means that most of the time you'll be chasing your targets. So let's skip to a part where there's actually some action, shall we? Ouch. Yes, that was incredibly, incredibly bad. That was a Fuso, I think, or a Nagato. It was something big. In fact, it was not, it was not the Japanese at all. It was another war spite. The enemy had, a, had one as well. Something to note about that, actually. War spite is the first battleship in game that isn't Japanese. <laughs> well, that's nice. And not only that, it's the first premium battleship. Up until now, it was just cruisers. Now, we have battleships. See what I mean by you have to chase your targets? Yes. Quite a few seconds passed between that it's split. Wasn't a very nice wait, because not only is this ship slow, but it's got short range. So, chasing your targets isn't exactly fun. It takes quite a while. So, it is especially satisfying when your guns hit.
solved, sir. Ah, yes, here's an issue. Rather annoying one. The ship does indeed turn faster than the guns can turn. The turrets turn at a slower rate, which means you'll often find them incapable of actually firing. Very annoying indeed, especially if you're fully loaded and you're trying to just fire. Not fun at all. Well, it was going to happen sooner or later. I suppose that uh, <laughs> retribution for using the horrifying aim assist mod, huh? You know, because I can't actually hit anything if I'm not using any help. Still, that was a rather good game. Want to see another one? And it's a tier 8 game on Fields of Ice, or Islands of Ice, or whatever it's called. Oh, I got an aircraft kill. Yay! Oh, and those pesky dive bombers just dropped a bomb on me. Oh dear. Set me on fire, so I was forced to use my repair crews. Yeah, I didn't want to, mates. Oh well. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Problem solved, sir! Oh look, a Fuso! Let's show it some love, shall we? Damaged. I'll say. <laughs> oh yes. I really like this ship already. It really hurts the enemy. Time to send down to our supermarine walrus to 
help spot some targets. Commentary would have been best recorded live. Oh well, as I said, you win some, you lose some. Let's skip ahead through the bit that where the action starts up again, shall we? team has taken the lead. And that Nagato has run aground. And here comes another attribute of the war spite. It slows down really damn fast. Which can be quite helpful in evading torpedoes. Victory is in sight.
Well, this video is now coming to an end. I hope it's been enjoyable. I ran out of things to say halfway through. Not really much else I really can say. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Good night.